Hello. Welcome back, everyone, to another first reaction video. Um, when did I do Velocity Design Comfort? November 3rd? Dang, time gets away from me, man. Um, this week, I'm taking vacation, time away from work, much needed. So I want to plow through and get a couple things done. Um, first off, I finished my novel. So I'm just kind of waiting for people to read it and like, you know, uh, for typos and grammar and stuff like that. Then that'll go up on the Kindle store. I might make a little video like announcing when that happens if you guys ever want to read it. Um, second thing, I'm almost done with my album. I'm like really excited about it because uh, like this is an album that I've been working on since like late 2015. So it's been three to four years, just kind of bits and pieces as they come to me. I haven't like actively done much with it up until like last year. Um, I've just had all of these random bits on my computer of like demos and just little snippets of, you know, guitar and piano. And I finally started to kind of push it together into an album um, around a year ago. And I had released my first song from the album Rockets, which I eventually took down because I was like, you know, I want to kind of like wait until I have all the songs ready and then I'll, I'll start releasing them. I don't want to go like piecemeal. But I just recently released yesterday the first song from the album as a single. Well, not the first song, but the first song to be released from the album as a single, Persephone, track 8 of 10. So please, 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 if you haven't already, go listen to it. Tell me what you guys think. Um, it's kind of this like dream pop, uh, shoegazy, folky, ethereal wave kind of track. Uh, the whole album is kind of like my my love letter to dream pop and gothic music and stuff like that uh, with some folk mixed in. So please let me know what you guys think of Persephone. Uh, at least just give it a view and a like. That'll just be just make my day. I think that's it. Um, so this week I am going to film this. Uh, if I have time, I might film the New Order substance reaction and um if i do that i might just like can it and save it for like after the next poll album that i do uh so we'll see we will see uh but anyway yeah velocity design comfort last song i list last album i listened to great album great album i haven't listened to it a lot since because i knew it's like i have listened to it as much as i did Talk Talk uh, Laughing Stock when I first listened to it. Um, where it's like, it's good background music, but I haven't had a chance to like listen to it in a very like background kind of way. Uh, just because I've been working a lot, slaving away at things, kind of focusing hard on stuff. I haven't listened to much at all recently, actually. But great album. I really appreciate the recommendation on that one. Substance. Joy Division. So this is, this is kind of interesting because... I haven't reacted, save for like a, a single track reaction I did with my nephew Ethan. We reacted to Love Will Tear Us Apart, which ironically I'll be listening to again today. Um, did that in October 1st. Um, we listened to two different versions because there's one version I like better than the other. I like the 1995 permanent mix um, or other, over any other mix that I've heard. Um, but Joy Division was... Unknown Pleasures and Closer were the first two reactions I've ever done on this channel. I did Unknown Pleasures September 29th, and I did Closer October 5th in 2018. Uh, the Unknown Pleasures video is, uh, broke 10,000 views, and the Closer one is at 6,000 right now. So, I'm very thankful for that. Um, maybe I'll touch a bit before going on to Substance. I'll touch a bit on how I feel about Joy Division at this point, because I was very honest in those reactions. I don't like regret the reactions at all, but people kind of, I don't know, like unknown pleasures, 173 likes, 56 dislikes, uh, closer, I think did better. 200 likes, 37 dislikes. I liked closer more than unknown pleasures. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if people took it the wrong way or I just wasn't very articulate or whatever it was. Um, I've gotten to the place where it's like, I can't listen to unknown pleasures and just enjoy myself. Um, there's two ways I listen to music. And I think this is the case for everybody. You're either 
empathizing and sympathizing or you're being a voyeur. So the first way is it's like, I'm feeling really down and sad. I'm gonna listen to Elliot Smith or Simon and Garfunkel or Bright Eyes, you know, whoever, whatever sad music floats your boat at the time, right? I've been there before. The other way is as a voyeur, where I think there's a lot of people who really enjoy metal music that aren't actually very angry people. Um, and they're able to do that because they're enjoying the experience of the music th almost through a lens. It's like they're not in that place. They're just kind of looking at it from where they are and enjoying it that way. And I've been able to do that before. Like, I love, one of my favorite albums is Lift Your Skinny Fists by Godspeed. And that's a really dark album. I mean, if you were on the empathy level, it's like you would have to be like so disillusioned with almost everything in order to be able to really connect to it. But when I listen to it, it's like, it feels like a movie to me. And I'm just like experiencing like this really cool uh, arc of almost a like transparent, elusive story that you're trying to chase through this like just instrumental rock album. But with Unknown Pleasures, I can't sympathize or empathize with it a lot. I can in some ways, and in those ways I really appreciate it. Like, I, I think that, like, the, the depression comes through really well, the alienation, the isolation comes through really well, um, but it's like, I'm not that kind of person, and I don't always feel that way, and what usually when I do feel, like, depressed or down, I want to be soothed, not, like, reaffirmed. I don't want to be like, yes, I'm sad. Are you sad too? You're sad too? Okay, good. I want to be like, not necessarily like coddled, but just kind of like, like Parachutes by Coldplay. My favorite album of all time. That's the kind of thing I would go to. Uh, In Rainbows by Radiohead. Second favorite album. Those are the kind of things I would go to if I want like a warm hug. But it's not like they're comforting to me per se. Well, Parachutes is, but like In Rainbows is a little dark, but it still has warmth to it. It's just Joy Division is cold, very cold and distant, obviously. So I can't really vibe with it on the empathy level because it doesn't give me what I need when I want to be empathetic with music. And voyeuristically, that's probably, voyeuristically is probably the best way I enjoy it. But it's so sparse. Um, and sometimes a little punky in some songs with unknown pleasures that I'm, it's just like, uh, so it's like I there's certain tracks on there that are I like. I love uh Disorder. I like Day of the Lords. Uh Shadow Play is great. She's Lost Control is probably one of my favorite on the album. Uh I Remember Nothing is a great closer. But it's like I can't say I enjoy them. Um just because like what I get from music, I just don't get from Unknown Pleasures all that much. And it's not like to diss the album, it's not to really say anything critical of it at all it's just like that's it it doesn't work with me all that much um and i think that's kind of where i landed on it it's like that's okay i don't have to love it and be able to listen like i don't have to love it in a way that i can listen to it all the time you know that's i'm okay with the fact that i don't want to listen to it very often um closer on the other hand i can enjoy more on the empathetic level and more on the voyeuristic level so I think Closer is a better fit for me. Um, and there's a lot of aspects of Closer that I really love. Um, and I've just kind of had to accept that Unknown Pleasures just doesn't work like that for me. Oh, long preamble aside, I apologize. I just feel like I needed to talk about Joy Division a little bit before going into this. Because it's the first two things I did, and I've been doing this for over a year now, and now I'm back to Joy Division again. It was kind of like a homecoming. There are, I'm doing the LP version, by the way, which is 37 minutes. The CD version is 62 minutes. So I'm doing just the LP right now, half of it, 37 minutes. If you guys want me to do the other half, let me know in the comments. Is it worth doing a part two just for the other half? If it is, I will. If not, this will be a single standalone video. So let me know, please. Please. <clears throat> okay. So we got, uh, what songs have I heard off this album? I've heard a little bit of Transmission. She's Lost Control. I think this is just a different mix than what's on Unknown Pleasures. I don't know. We'll see. Um, heard part of Atmosphere, which is really nice. I think it plays 
over Ian Curtis's death in the movie Control, which I still have yet to see. I really want to, though, very soon. And then Love Will Tear Us Apart, which I gotta say, it's not the permanent mix, so I'm just I'm just gonna be so sad listening to it. Love Will Tear Us Apart is probably my favorite Joy Division song, though. It's like, I, it, it's a really nice mix of, what would you even call it? Like, they're... It's, it's probably the poppiest Joy Division song, but it, it, it's still dark. But it has like this little glimmer of light in it, just ever so slightly. But without further ado, let's start, guys. Um, I'm not thoroughly optimistic that I'm going to love this because it does have some of their earlier work as well. It has uh, two tracks from their early, uh, their first EP. Or they did when they were kind of punkier. So I've already gone on record saying I don't love punk music, but I'll try my best. I'll try my best. Here we go. I'm also going to be eating various leftover Halloween candy, and I'll update you as to what I eat. Okay? It's very important. Because I only eat the best, and I leave the rest for the rest. Warsaw. Heath. Music. Um, kind of interesting reading this uh, Wikipedia page for this song. A little bit of history behind it. World War II. Um, yeah, that's uh, that. That is that is punk music right there. Again, not my thing, but more palatable to me than some other punk uh, tracks I've heard before. It's uh, it's not like like the crazy, energetic, off the wall, grindy kind of punk. It's really noisy. Uh, it's just that that's what's really not my thing. But this this I can I can stomach a little bit. Uh, Leaders of Men, also Three Musketeers are going down. Uh, another song off of An Ideal for a Living. Let's see what we got. Is this Ian Curtis? Sounds nothing like anything else I've heard. I like it more than Warsaw. Um... Yeah, I think what, what the thing about punk, like I explained with the uh, like empathy versus voyeurism angles, it's like empathy. Like I don't um, like feel like you know disenfranchised a whole lot, so I don't empathize with punk music. And then voyeuristically, it's like I don't necessarily either care or agree often with what the punk artists are saying. Um, not that I shouldn't care, but it's just like, I don't know what, like much what you're talking about or what you're getting at. Um, so I think that's kind of why punk is like such a niche. Um, how do you say it? There's such a specific culture to it and it's kind of isolated from everything else. Um, it's just, it's, it's not for me. It's not for me. I mean, you guys know, I love dream pop and you know, <laughs> much chiller stuff than this. It's, uh, not to diss it, though. Not to diss it. I'm just being perfectly transparent. D digital. Digital? Digital. Wow. This is the Joy Division I'm used to. Yeah, this is definitely Martin Hannett. Twix. He 
His voice like completely changes when he's yelling. Pretty good. I like it. Um, again, not something I'll come back to a lot, but that that's definitely more of what I'm used to and what I expect from Joy Division. Um, I like the bass, and the guitar was actually pretty impressive, too. Way to go, Bernard. Auto-suggestion. Six minutes long. Let's go. Tried to type the F word, but you made it say duck. We were strangers. Milky Way. I've eaten all my candy in the first four songs. does i mean it's technically like a, a a reject from the uh unknown pleasure sessions that didn't make it onto the album and i can kind of see why i think there are songs on unknown pleasures that do what auto suggestion did but better um like i'd rather listen to like i remember nothing than uh auto suggestion any day of the week honestly um yeah, I don't I don't know. Maybe that one's like a fan favorite, maybe not, but whatever. Transmission. I've heard part of this. Um kind of cool. Low apparently covered it. I love Low. Uh maybe I should listen to their cover at some point. But yeah, this was um released as a single because it was supposed to be for their aborted self-titled album, Warsaw, I think. Um yeah, this was, uh, Peter Hook said, we were doing a sound check at the Mayflower in Maine. We played Transmission. People had been moving around and they all stopped to listen. I realized that was our first great song. Let's listen to it. Very signature Martin Hannett mixed guitar right there. I really like how Ian Curtis really isn't that amazing of a singer, like tonally wise. Like when he does hit his notes, it's like really effective, but when he doesn't, it's also effective in a different way. Post-punk guitar. Pretty solid, you know. I actually wouldn't have minded if that was on uh, Unknown Pleasures. Like, I think I like that more than like Candidate, definitely Inner Zone, maybe even Wilderness. Like that would have been like that would have been a great one to put instead of Wilderness. Or you go like Shadow Play, Transmission, Wilderness. I remember nothing. <gasps> Hire me, Joy Division. Oh wait. Okay, so she's lost control. This is my favorite track off of Unknown Pleasures. Let's see what this one sounds like. Is this a, I think this is a different mix. Let me see, look at the content. Uh, she's lost control. Yeah, I, I don't see anything saying it's different. Okay. Okay, here we go. It is different.
This one's about a minute longer than the Unknown Pleasures one. Guitar is mixed much lower in this one. Two separate recordings of the song have been released, the version appearing on the band's debut album, and an extended, more electronic version, which is what we're listening to now, released in 1980 as a 12-inch single to kind of uh, coincide with the release of Substance. Uh, this 12-inch version contains an additional verse not present in the initial version of the song, making the song one of the last studio recordings recorded by the band prior to the May 1980 suicide of Ian Curtis. Interesting. Okay, so this is just a longer version. I don't like the mix as, like, I like the bass being more present, but it kind of overshadows everything else. Um, so I think I prefer the, the debut version. I do dig the vocal recording on this one, though. It's much rawer. There are a lot of aspects about this mix that I like, but I don't, I don't prefer it. That was pretty solid. Um, I kind of wish I could like marry the two versions together because there's a lot of things in there I liked. Oh. I don't know, man. Okay. Incubation. I believe this is from the closer sessions. And it's an instrumental. Should I sing my in curse lyrics over it? I'll piss everyone off. We were strangers. Some of the guitar line in the very back reminds me of uh, that song by Battles, Atlas. Like, oh, there's a guitar part in here that sounds just like it. That was a music. That was definitely a music. Uh, not bad, just a nice little instrumental thing. I um, wonder if that was like meant to be, uh, have vocals on it. I don't know. Dead Souls. Uh, this is a B-side single to Atmosphere. So this was 1980, I assume. So this was also Closer Sessions. I got it wrong. The single of She's Lost Control from 1980, the, the 12 inch, which came out 1980, right? Yes, uh, was re-released in 1988 to coincide with Substance. It wasn't like it was promoting Substance. They re-released it because Substance came out with that on it. Dead Souls. It's the most pleasant song named Dead Souls I've ever listened to. Quit calling Ian Curtis. That was a cool one. I uh, don't love it, but uh, 
All right, down to two songs. I'm familiar with Atmosphere, heard part of it. Uh, very, just very emotional and swelling. Very good. Really, what other song could you use for that scene if you were to do a biopic of Joy Division, you know? It's really cool to hear these songs and hear like the tiny little beginning seeds of New Order as well. Cool. Very moving song. I like it. Last song, guys. I've heard this before. I've done a reaction to it on this channel. Both this version, I believe, and a better version. But we're, not, we're just going to close this out with a great... Uh, ironically enough, close out Joy Division reaction with my favorite Joy Division song. Love will tear us apart. Routine bites hard and ambitions are low. One thing that I remember my piano teacher telling me is to try to avoid parallel motion, which just means like basically don't play like octaves too much. So it's like if we were to take a guitar, for example, you could have like uh, an octave and it's the same note just in two different frequencies um, so it's like but if I were to play like if I were to play like just octaves like all the way across on a melody it would sound really boring um, Like, there, there's not a whole lot of texture to it, uh, usually. I mean, the, typically, that's the case. So, um, that's often avoided in a lot of, like, Baroque and classical music is parallel motion. And when it is done, there's a tension brought to it because it's not usually done. And so if you're going to do parallel motion, you kind of need to be justified in doing it. It needs to work. It needs to not make the song bland. What I love about this song is that you have... Parallel motion happening in three different voicings. You have the synth, the bass, and the vocals all singing or uh, performing the notes. Da, 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 and all happening at the same time. Um, I, th I believe it's like bass is low, vocals are midpoint, and the synth is the highest. But it's all just the same note. And it works somehow. It's great. You can hear all three voicings here. You hearing this? Did you hear that outro? Did you hear that outro, guys? Now, let me play the outro to my preferred version, the permanent mix. Listen to this. You can hear the guitar. It's just, it's, dude, I love the permanent mix so much. I was so amazed when I found it. I, I think that the Joy Division channel uploaded the music video with the permanent mix on it. And I'm like, holy crap, where's this been? This is the best version of the song. Anyway, that was Substance, guys. Uh, again, let me know if you want me to do the other half, if it's worth doing. Um, yeah, pretty, you yeah, know, it's, it's Joy Division. Uh, War Song, Leaders of Men, again, not my thing. Digital was cool. Auto Suggestion, eh. Other stuff on Unknown Pleasures was better. Transmission is cool. Interesting alternate version of She's Lost Control. Incubation, fine. Dead Souls was interesting. 
Uh, Atmosphere Solid, and of course, Love Will Tear Us Apart, my favorite Joy Division song. Very cliche, I know. I know. I should be like, actually, Insight is my favorite Joy Division track. Track number four. Off of Unknown Pleasures, 1979, produced by Martin Hannon. Great, great post-punk uh, LP, yes. No, she, uh, Love Will Tear Us Apart and She's Lost Control are my two favorites. But yeah, quality stuff, guys, quality stuff. Um, yeah, so I'm like I said, I might record the New Order Substance later this week if I have time. Uh, well, I have plenty of time if I, if I want to. It's going to be a two-parter, though, because it's like over 100 minutes or something like that. So it's like I need to cut it in half. Um, so it'll be a two-parter. Um, but stay tuned for a poll video. I'll do another poll video. Um, ask you guys, uh, this will be poll number three. After five polls, I will close it off to the uh, just the patrons only. So if you, if you want to have access to these polls in the future, uh, after the fifth one is done, you just need to give a dollar a month. I know you'll have access behind the paywall. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for video, uh, poll video number three. I'm going to pick four albums. And you're going to pick which one I'm going to listen to, okay? Okay. I like you more than a friend. Uh, don't say I didn't told you so. Don't say I didn't tell you so. Um, and should, I'm, I'm just going to recommend a song. Okay, I'm going to go to my Spotify. I'm going to go to my everything playlist, which is my archival playlist of every song that I have enjoyed and will listen to more than once. There's 1,335 songs on here, 96 hours long. Let me just find a random song. And I'm going to tell you guys to go listen to it. Okay, here, here we go. I want you guys to go listen to Apocalypse by Cigarettes After Sex. Great little slow core, kind of dreamy gothic dark wave kind of track here here's a snippet of it all right there you go very good stuff love cigarettes after sex that is all thank you for watching uh check out my patreon check out my new song persephone off of my upcoming album and that is all